O Y. So, Reverend Michael, we're ready for the lesson. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, beloveds, and happy Mother's Day. You knew it was Mother's Day, I know. Many of you kind of got the clue when you walked in the door this morning. Today we come together in our spiritual community to recognize not only the biological mother, but also the divine mother. Thank you so much for that. Brian. You do know that each of us required a biological mother, right? <laughs> Great, so we're on the same page in the beginning here. <laughs> in case we lose our place, that's one thing we can come back to. Right. Well, our biological mother allowed us to be formed within a perfect space. A space where the balance of the biological conditioning was absolutely as needed. You and I are the result of the perfect process of the warm and nurturing environment referred to as the human womb. And then eventually, out of that, in the perfect amount of time, we moved out of that safe and protected place into a new world, one of experience and opportunity. Our journey had begun. Our journey had begun. The nine months from conception to birth. Now, for an expectant mother, that can seem like an eternity. <laughs> Well, how about when a child enters high school? That can feel like an eternity, can't it? <laughs> Four years of an eternity. Well, the truth is, the only real reality is not that. The reality is that it's the soul's process. That is the reality. That process of our individual souls evolving. Well, I am mean, so in awe of the evolution of life. Even though there are moments throughout my life that time either seems to stand still or drag on and on and on and on. What I know about this time thing and about the experience thing, that from the spiritual perspective, it all happens through divine intelligence. And if there is no sense of time in the spiritual sense, time is man-made. And its purpose is for valuing our outer world. We get paid by the hour. There's a reference to our worth by what we do, how we look, what we have, how we do it, what we say. So whether it's gestation or a graduation, it all happens in divine right time and perfect order on the spiritual side of life. Because in reality, it's God's time. It's God's time. We are in God's time. And so getting back to the gestation process, Every cell in that process does not need the mother to do anything once the process has begun. Once the process is in place, whatever it is arrives in its rightful conclusion. The same holds true for a graduation or any result or manifestation that we might think into or say we want to know or have or be more of. 
Well, you can fret and you can stew. You can push, you can grunt. And you can groan all you want. But the process plays itself out. It always does. Any of us who have lived more than 20 minutes have an example of that. How often have we tried to make it work? Force it to happen? Well, we can kind of cajole it. We can conform it. And it'll be there for a minute, like a bad relationship. <laughs> but eventually, bye-bye. It doesn't stand because it's not in its rightful place and conclusion. The conclusion, maybe but not the rightful place at the time. So, life plays itself out perfectly, perfectly, but we must begin to trust this perfection, this order, this evolution. Trust the divine within to arrive at its conclusion. In his uh, great poem, Tintern Alley, the acclaimed poet William Wadsworth hints of a natural state of meditation. And this meditation examples the importance of an inward focus, allowing the mind to attune to itself. I love that. For the mind to attune to itself. And in so doing, turning the mirror of our outer experience toward the inner soul. Here are his words. The serene and blessed mood in which the affectations gently lead us on. Until the breath of this corporal frame and even the motion of our human blood almost suspended, we are laid asleep in body and become a living soul. While with an eye made quiet by the power of harmony and the deep power of joy, we see into the life of things. We see into the life of things. We, as we are more willing to see into the truth of ourselves, of the greater ability, our ability, no one else's, to live from spirit, that's the real place of J-O-Y. Living from joy is creating an experience out of our authenticity. Living from joy is creating our life from who we really are. Now, authentic means several things. So for today, let's assume it means master. The master. So as we more consciously master our own lives, Guess what increases? Joy. The experience of joy is the cause and the effect of our inner spirit initially being recognized and then validated by our actions and our life experience. But first, we must recognize that we are. I have an acronym for joy. You knew I would. <laughs> you knew I would. J. Justifies. O. Ones. Y. Yearnings. Justifies one's yearnings. So to justify is to regard your worthiness. It is taking ownership of who you are. Who are you? And how do you value yourself as a divine soul that you are? Who are you? Dr. Holmes tells us in this thing called you. Who loses his life shall find it. Since the whole teaching of Jesus was that God is life. He could not have meant that you should actually lose your life but that you should let go of the lesser order to experience the greater. If you lose a sense of unhappiness, you will become happy. 
If you lose the sense of confusion, you will be at peace. If you could become consciously and subjectively aware, even for one moment, of your true spiritual perfection, there would, be, there would come such a conversation in your mind as instantly to heal your physical body. If you wish to live in the kingdom of heaven, forget hell. <laughs> forget about it. Forget about it. One of the ways I value who I am is to take time for me. Do you take time for you? What do you do? How do you do you? How do you nurture your soul? For me, it hasn't always been an easy assignment. I used to tell myself that when I finish my work, then I can do me. Anybody else? Get that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do your chores first, and then we can have fun. <clears throat> then we can play. And so gifting oneself with windows of opportunity in our daily life opens the door for spirit to have its say with you. Its say with you. When you fill up your day with too much outside life, the world has its way with you. The world has its way with you. Which would you rather experience? The world having its way with you? Or spirit having its say with you? Barbara Marks Hubbard, in her book, Conscious Evolution, wrote this. Conscious evolution inspires, us, inspires in us a mysterious and humble awareness that we have been created by this awesome process of evolution and are now being transformed by it to take a more mature role as co-creators. Mm 